Brittany Freed is a grade 12 student at Hong Kong International School, HKIS. Uh, she was ranked by uh, South China Morning Young Post as one of the top teens in Hong Kong in 2014, along with uh, other inspirational young leaders like Joshua Wong, the Hong Kong uh, student activist, and the youngest uh, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. So, Brittany, thank you very much for sitting down on Through the Eyes of Youth with me today. Thank you very much for having me. Now, Brittany, you know, all teenagers have uh, our sort of passion and obsessions, mm -hmm. and I know that you have a very, very unique session and that is uh, wholeheartedly devoting yourself to helping others. So Brittany, um, tell us a bit about how you got involved and when did you get involved in uh, community service? Sure, so I was really fortunate growing up. My yeah. family always realized the importance of service and giving back, mm -hmm. but um, it wasn't until around seventh or eighth grade that I really found my passion for it and how it really set me um, going and motivated me. Um, this started when I discovered one of my greatest inspirations, Craig Kielberger, who is ah. the founder of Free the Children. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So, so after you uh, uh, you found out about Craig um, Kielberger, did you uh, did you? I mean, what aspect of Kielberger inspired you the most? Was it the character himself, or the work that he's done, or the or the mere fact that a, a child can change the world? So I think that was a lot of it. Was I myself never realized that as a child I actually had the potential and the power to really make a difference mm. and seeing the fact that Craig from the age of 12 had really devoted himself to community service and changing mm. the world and really pushing boundaries like people before him hadn't before that really empowered me to then also take a stand and really get involved in social issues I cared deeply about. Mm. And as I understand you uh, so after you found out about uh, Craig and all the great work that he's done you joined uh, one of his organizations right mm. Me To We yes. and so can I ask when you uh, when you first joined Me To We? Did mm -hmm. you di w were you just very excited and say, "Oh, I just want to be a part of this," or mm -hmm. did you have some sort of uh, a vision for sort of what do you want to achieve or what do you want to do for Me To We? Sure. So um, we. I was at a school event and mm -hmm. they brought in two Me To We speakers and it was mm -hmm. at that that I discovered what Me To We really was, the mm -hmm. heart of youth action. Mm -hmm. And so after that, my friend and I, we were extremely excited. We felt um, almost, we were so energetic just mm -hmm. from the idea that we thought that we could really make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we went online and we found out a lot of the campaigns that Free the Children and Me Do We have to offer. Right. And so we found one called the Vow of Silence. The Vow of Silence. Um, we okay. brought this to our middle school. Um, mm -hmm. That first year we were able to raise around 72,000 Hong Kong dollars. Wow. And we were able to dedicate this through um, Free the Children, another one of Craig's organizations, mm -hmm. to a community they support in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we were able to raise this money through um, having our students go silent for a day. Mm -hmm. And now the Vow of Silence, the point was to signify those who don't have a say in the world. We are mm -hmm. very used to being able to say what we want, when we want, and being mm -hmm. able to stand up for our rights. Yeah. However, there are many uh, children, many people around the world that don't have these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So that was the point of the vow of silence, was aware awareness raising, funds raising, so that we could then build a school in Kenya and provide it with textbooks, furnitures, and other supplies. Mm. Well, I, I read on your blog that uh, one of the highlights of your um, of your experience with Me Too We was you actually got to uh, speak alongside uh, Craig uh, in one yes. of the events in Beijing and Dalian last year. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about that amazing experience? <laughs> Definitely. Um, so after we started working mm. with Me To We, it mm. just we were engrossed and we couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was able to travel with them for a month to Kenya, uh, three oh. weeks to Ecuador, and over mm -hmm. the summer I was actually able to work with them as an intern. Mm -hmm. And this ultimately led to having the opportunity to speak at an event called Mini We Day. Mm -hmm. So I was okay. able to speak along Craig and mm -hmm. um, alongside Craig in mm -hmm. two events. And these Mini We Days, the points, they're almost like concerts, but they're mm -hmm. concerts for social change. So people mm -hmm. are are playing music related to um, social issues. People are giving speeches about the difference they've made and they hope to make. They bring in a lot of celebrities and big people like mm. this. So it was a really wow. great opportunity yeah. to not only be inspired with a lot of other youth my age, mm -hmm. but also to meet one of my greatest inspirations. Yeah. Well, look, I, I'm sure it's always an amazing experience to you know meet with someone who has really inspired you. And 
and more so to be able to really just talk to him face to face. What what did you talk about uh, uh, with Craig when you when you saw him and when you spoke mm -hmm. with him? We talked about a lot of different things. We talked about education systems, the right. Hong Kong system, mm -hmm. um, and things such as universities and how these are shaping people. Mm -hmm. We talked about refugee camps in Gaddafi. Wow. We also yeah. talked about um, one of my other greatest inspirations, Nelson Mandela, and uh, yes. the track of Me to We and Forward Thinking for Free the Children. So mm. we were really able to talk about mm. a bunch of different issues. It was just so interesting and yeah. so engaging. Well, I'm sure it was. That's a very diverse range of <laughs> issues that you guys talked about. About now, Brittany, you s uh, well, you just mentioned that you spoke to uh, Craig about the, the this education system here mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, right? Um, now, as I understand, apart from uh, apart from Me Too We, you also co-founded and lead an organization of your own called uh, uh, Teaching for Tomorrow, right? Yes, that's so right. So, having worked with uh, Me Too We for several years before founding that organization, what what were the most valuable lessons that you took away from Me Too We, which then you apply to Teaching for Tomorrow, and what do you think that, you know, what other aspects do you think uh, Teaching for Tomorrow can do better? Sure. So I think um, something that I really learned from Me to We mm -hmm. was just this, there were two main things. Mm -hmm. was first of all, like you're never too young to start making change, start yes. accepting change. Mm -hmm. And I think that really inspired me and got me going and helped mm -hmm. me realize that I want to help other youth find their potential as mm -hmm. well. And the other thing was that there's this idea of empowerment, mm -hmm. telling other people that they have the ability to make change and they have the responsibility to mm -hmm. take action in their community. Mm -hmm. And that was something that Me to We taught me that we're really hoping to instill through Teaching for Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And now Teaching Through Tomorrow is definitely still growing and it's still starting mm -hmm. to develop. But the thing is, is we've just been really impressed in how we've really been able to get our feet on the ground yes. and get started with this work that we think is really important here in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Now you, I think one of the important things you spoke about is how young people, right, children, mm -hmm. like like right, you know, he's he he got going at the age of twelve. So yes. the idea that children can can change the world. Mm -hmm. So now there seems to be this uh, common uh, sort of conception out there that uh, in places like Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, where you're sort of pressure to excel academically, um, students are not as involved as in, you know, as not, not as involved in community service as they, sure. not as much as they should. Yeah. Um, so what do you, would you, I mean, wh what would you attribute this issue to? Would it, is it the mindset of uh, Hong Kong kids or the academic pressure or pressure from family? What, what do you think is the issue here in Hong Kong? I think a lot of things in Hong Kong are very academic driven. I mean, I mm. see it a lot in our international school. I mm. see it a lot in a lot of the local schools as well yep. in Hong Kong, perhaps even more than in our international school. And so mm. I think this constant pressure really mm. makes kids like put their heads down and focus on the books when they're um, potentially missing some great opportunities out yeah. there because um, your youth, your childhood is so much more enriching when you're able to reach out to others and branch mm. out. Yes. And so I think that's a really vital part mm. of becoming a well-rounded citizen, of becoming a, um, a child of the future, someone who's really able to make a difference, mm. even no matter what field you want to pursue. Yes. It's yeah. just the ability to be able to work with other people, mm. to go beyond the academics and to really like reach out and be able to touch others. Mm. Now, so you've spoken about how academic pressure is a main issue in, in, in mm. Hong Kong where you know, you're sort of pressured to always pressure to prioritize academics over everything else, right? I mean, even in international schools. But in recent years, there seems to be this trend, which mm -hmm. is, you know, well, it's well established in international school as, at, but becoming increasingly so in local schools as well, whereby schools, you know, actively put community service as a part of the curriculum. So they sort of make these compulsory hours that you want to complete. Do you think that's actually a good idea to get students more involved or do you think making a compulsory sort of you know sort of decreases the value of service mm -hmm. itself. What, what's your thought on that issue? So I think it's a really good um, first stepping stone to get students just to have a little taste of the service, but I really mm -hmm. think it should be something initiated from the students. Yes. I think that mm -hmm. um, students sometimes they need to be pushed a little bit outside mm -hmm. of their comfort zone to try these service experiences. Mm -hmm. However, at a certain point, like it's something that you discover within yourself that you really love. And I think mm -hmm. everyone really can discover mm -hmm. what they do want to devote their time to. And mm -hmm. sometimes it takes that little nudge. Yeah. But what I would say is that like students shouldn't be afraid 
to dedicate time to going out and engaging in service activities. And mm -hmm. also, in Hong Kong, there is no shortage of opportunities where yes. they can get involved. Mm -hmm. There's everything from helping homeless to help and the elderly to helping young children in nursery schools mm -hmm. the, to even refugees. So I think there's like so many opportunities out there. And it's mm -hmm. up to each student to find his or her own favor, like, um, potential or favorite activity to engage in because that way it really becomes a self-initiated drive which I think is the mm. most important part. Mm. Well as I know uh, you know apart from all your you know incredible service um, you know con uh, endeavors in community service you're also a very good swimmer and also a very good student right and you're Thank in grade you. 12 so where where do you think you go going to go to university? So I've sent in my 10 applications yep. and I'm still waiting on a number of them. Right, right. But um, in hopes, I'm really hoping to go to the Georgetown School of Foreign Service. Oh, that's a great They school, have right. a really good um, international right. program there. Yeah. And are you going to study international relations, I assume? I'm, I would love to study yeah. international relations yep. and minor in Chinese oh, okay. and yeah. also that's do right. um, a yeah. bit of business in there yeah. because I believe like in order to be able to run a social enterprise or an yeah. NGO or something like this, you need to have an understanding both of the corporate world and of the international relations of the world. Mm -hmm. And so Georgetown's School of Foreign Service or the Huntsman program, a dual degree program yes. at University of Pennsylvania. Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll get into wherever you want to go, Brittany, with your <laughs> yeah. amazing experiences. So now final question, Brittany. Um, sure. Uh, you know, do you plan to uh, continue teaching for tomorrow and community service as sort of your career after um, university? And if yes, what's one sort of important goal mm -hmm. that you hope to achieve in your career? That's a great question. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this recently, especially mm -hmm. going into college. And first of all, there is no doubt in my mind I'm definitely going to keep involved in these service um, activities mm -hmm. and with Teaching for Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We're setting up measures so that next year when um, my co-founder Claire Spackman and I go off to right. university, um, my brother and other high school people will be taking over it. But right. um, further than that, my ultimate goal is to be mm -hmm. able to start um, a system similar to that of Me To We and Free the Children. Yep. So Free the Children is a charity yeah. which means that um, donations mm -hmm. come into it and it is able to then direct those towards supporting communities mm -hmm. whereas me to we is a social enterprise mm -hmm. so what that means is they're able to use um, they're able to uh, get their own money they're able to raise their own money for instance through artisan products made in yep. Kenya like the necklace and oh, right. earrings I'm wearing yep. or offering leadership programs mm -hmm. for youth so yeah, that they are right. able to then take 50% of their net profit yep. and directly invest it into Free the Children. Right, right. And so that keeps Free the Children sustained, that keeps this way Midwee's able to offer enriching programs for other youth. And I think that sister program is just unbelievable. Mm. So ultimately, I would yes. love to help create more of these around the world so that mm -hmm. we don't only have one that's doing fantastic things, mm -hmm. but able to have a set of them that are really making a difference. Mm. So that's my ultimate goal. Mm. Brittany, I. Honestly, I think whatever you put your mind to, you will succeed. And I wish you all the very best in your future Thank endeavors. You Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank, Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.